Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope everybody's been doing well. I'm coming back at you again here today with another a very interesting breakthrough, um, something we discovered relating to sample cards. And when I say we, I want to give a shout out to um, the different people that are uh, pretty active in the Collector Art House Discord, which is a Discord I created, what, maybe about four to six weeks ago? I don't know, time flies, maybe it was two, three months. But in any case, there's a great group of guys there. Um, the link is in the description here, so I invite anybody to come out and, and check that out and join us. Um, a lot of people that are very interested in the history of the game, very much like I am. And uh, it's a great community. We kind of collaborate to to piece things together and try to um, draw some conclusions about the history of the game and kind of um, what we can learn about how we went from several months ago, maybe as far back as a year plus ago, uh, to, to where we are today. And um, documenting that in the videos here for everybody's public consumption to get the information out there. I think it's pretty fascinating um, looking back and discovering things like this. And then also, um, shout out to my patrons. A lot of the folks in the discard are, are patrons and um, some of the most active. So uh, thanks to you guys for supporting uh, what I do here and working with me to try to piece some of this history together and uh, enjoy the art and everything else um, that we offer through the Patreon. All right, so without further ado, I'm um, starting here at the Collector Art House website. Again, www.collectorarthouse.com for those of you that are new to the channel. And uh, by the way, been growing strong. I appreciate everybody's interest and um, spreading the word on the channel, which is fairly new itself, and getting the word out there. So if you haven't been to the website, I'm going to start here and reference an article that I had written quite a while ago at this point. So if you scroll down a bit into the archive of various articles, this was back in, wow, June. Um, so five months ago, seems like it was two, three months ago when I wrote this thing. Um, but I wrote this, um, nice article about the history of sample cards and kind of pieced together everything we, we know about that. And, um, there's some great history. If you haven't checked out this article yet, uh, please go and do so. You might enjoy this. Um, but I want to scroll down to, for context, for those of you that have not heard this before, uh, what the origin of the sample packs are or which exist out in the wild today that have been distributed by the company through various mechanisms. All right, so let's start here. Um, very early on, there were some pre-constructed decks distributed to various um, social media uh, folks to get the word out on sorcery. Um, the first of those was a set of pre-con decks, and there's four, one for each elemental avatar that were given to Red Zone Rogue. And um, we've since uh, were able to confirm that those were actually printed by Eric at a local print shop in New Zealand. So they weren't printed by the China printer that's going to be printed for the mainstream alpha set. So those make th that makes those a little bit unique and different. You might not even classify those as sample cards per se. Um, they're kind of more print-and-play type cards with the added... Uh, cool factor that they were done by Eric uh, very early on in the creation of the game. So maybe some of the design of those cards um, would be interesting to see. That's that that's where my interest would be, like looking at the raw form of these cards. And I'll call it raw because it's very early stages and there's been dramatic change and improvement to the game over the past many months. All right, so then beyond that, there were several other... Um, Folks that received pre-con decks, I'm estimating about four or five-ish, maybe six different people. Um, so you could go and read who those names are and a little bit about that history and kind of speculating where maybe the fourth, fifth, or sixth might have been given to. And then there was a pre-con set that was, uh, there was a giveaway event, a live stream on YouTube with Red Zone Rogue uh, YouTube channel and Simon, who uh, works for the company. Um, so several folks received those. I think uh, it was about 30, maybe 30 plus people uh, won seven cards from that were randomly assorted across those pre-con decks. Um, so that's where a lot of the data you're going to see today comes from. I have photographs of uh, different variants, all the different variants of the, of the different provenances of these sample cards. So you have the pre-con decks. Um, there were also 12 sample booster packs given the Red Zone Rogue, and those were the silver uh, pack so they had no art print on the packaging itself and then there was a box with the art packaging that was given to um, there was a full box given to Team Covenant and they showed that uh, in, a, in a series of live streams you should go check that out it was very interesting and um, they're going to be including those in their subscription service I believe that which starts with Arthurian Legends um, if I'm not mistaken so uh, you know as many as they can stretch that I believe they intend to include one per subscriber um, 
All right, so then beyond that, in recent months, there were a few packs here and there given out to various folks that helped with the um, spreading the word on sorcery or helped, uh, you know, with the design of the game or various capacities, um, helping with the development or with um, content creation and things like that. So uh, full disclosure, I received one art pack myself, and art pack means it has the art printed on the packaging. Um, so that's something I cherish and I'm going to keep as kind of a, personal relic of this great time pre-release is kind of a memoir of that um, i do uh, intend to have some sample packs after the kickstarter fulfillment so we'll look to do a giveaway of some kind to give back to the community uh, after release but um, i got one there there's some other folks that received anywhere from one to three packs from what i understand um, so there's others, you know, various folks have been selling them through various channels on a Facebook group and discord channels, different things like that. So there's folks that have acquired, uh, sample cards from every source. And I've actually personally handled, um, those cards from every source as well. So again, that would be the pre-con decks given to the different social media influencers that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, the art packs that were given to folks as kind of a recognition for their efforts in supporting the game and the uh, silver packs that Red Zone Rogue uh, received. So I'm gonna show some images of all those different variants. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that there's going to be an additional 244 sample packs, and these will be the silver packs that will be distributed with the Kickstarter fulfillment. And those come from the four Avatar of the Realm tiers, which was the top pledge tier, and you get 12 sample packs per backer there. So 12 times four is 48. 24 collector tiers received four sample packs each, and those will be the silver packs as well. And then lastly, one silver pack per sorcery early bird uh, tier pledge, and there were 100 of those. So in aggregate, that's how you get your 244. All right, so let's switch over now. I'm gonna show some images of the different variants and we'll see what we can learn from that. So bear with me, these are gonna pop up at the screen one at a time. And um, let me start with the card backs, right? Okay, and I'm gonna zoom in here. And what we're looking at here, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see these differences, right? So on the top row, you have the card backs of cards that came from the art packs. And on the bottom row, these are from the pre-con decks. So right away, you can see that there's a, a distinct color contrast between the two. Um, and when I compare the art packs to the silver packs, you're going to notice some subtleties in the sorcery logo up top um, compared to the other one. But this one, you can see it, there's quite a bit of variability between the top and bottom um, around the whole card, just the color, color tones of each, right? And I'll, I will say that um, this is difficult catching this in still image. You know, lighting has a big effect here. Um, and filming it's a little tricky too. I, just, I thought about showing some of these live, but it just doesn't come across as good as trying to capture the right lighting and comparing. But some are look very close in quality between the pre-cons and the packs of either variant, be it the art packs or the silver packs. Um, so I will say that sometimes it is very hard to tell. And um, I will caveat that there can be variability in printing, of course, um, from the printer. So... Um, some might be a little more starkly different and others might be very close and that just might be normal um, variation in print, you know, just from ink and maybe quality control, other other things that go into that. Um, so you got to take some of this with a grain of salt, but I'm going to finish with something very, uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal something that shows us very clearly that there's definitely a difference between the pre-con decks and the sample packs. Uh, be it the art packs and the and the um, silver packs alike. All right, so there you go. There's the card backs. Just flipping it over. Um, oh, excuse me. So actually, on this next one, we're going to show the art packs versus the silver packs. So stop, top row, art packs, bottom row, silver packs. And here you see it's a lot tighter, right? They're very similar. Um, they're, you know, the resolution isn't perfect here, but there it looks like there could be some variability between the sorcery logo, just the, the depth or color quality of the blue, uh, top versus bottom. And then if we look at the silver packs versus the pre-cons. So on this one, you're going to get the silver packs up top and the pre-cons on the bottom, right? So if you remember back to the first one, um, I'm going to go back here and you had art packs on top 
and then silver packs on bottom or art packs on top, precons on bottom, right? And those are pretty notable. And then if we go silver packs on top, precons on bottom, same thing. Very distinctly different. Although they're they're consistent across, right? So that tells you there are two different print runs. You can kind of see the provenance of the two. Clearly different, but across it, its own print run, they're they're very consistent. And likewise down here, right? All right, so now if we go to... Let me show you an actual card. And I will start with the front. This is the beautiful artwork, Plume Pegasus by Melissa Benson. And I did a behind the art article on this particular artwork with insights from Melissa herself. She's very gracious to tell me about the story, the backstory of the Plume Pegasus and how it relates to a very special artwork she did for an alpha card for Magic the Gathering. So um, let me show you where that's at because I think this is a, a great page that I'm proud of on my site, and I want folks to be able to find this. But if you go to Sorcery Behind the Art, you can see in the dropdown, I've done many Behind the Art features, and these all include insights from directly from the artists. Uh, so you could click on any card here, and there's a story behind the artwork, how they came up with the illustration, the type of art direction they, they received from Eric. Um, so these are very fascinating articles. <coughs> They're short and easily digestible, so... Definitely take some time someday to go and check these, but you click on Plume Pegasus here. So I'll illustrate this and boom, jumps to the article. And in blue, you have the insights from Melissa Benson. I added some text around it to kind of talk about where it comes from and see this one short and sweet. You have some context from the Mesa Pegasus, which is a uh, artwork she did for Magic the Gathering Alpha. And then, um, you know, carries through and then here's your sorcery artwork for the Plume Pegasus. Amazing card, such a, such a beautiful artwork. All right, um, so back here, you see uh, going from left to right, you have the pre-con, the silver pack card, and the art card. And you can see there's some color contrast. Again, the resolution isn't perfect here. You, you can see it's not too sharp on the artist's name. Um, and part of that's because I zoomed, right? If you zoom out, it gets a little better, but it's, it's kind of difficult to tell looking at the facing side of the card. I think if you had these in your possession hand by hand, you could do that. But reality is these are extremely scarce, you know, so you're not likely to have, um, to own many of these from different sources. I'm just putting this out there for the record. So in the future, when these are out there and they change hands in the secondary market, um, you'll have some some documented evidence of the pedigree because these are all credible sources. I know exactly where these came from and who they came from. Um, so I want folks to understand that these differences do not mean they are fake cards or print and play home printed cards. They're all from the China printer and there are differences. Okay, so that's important to know for history. Uh, let's see. So that is the front of the Plume Pegasus. Now let's look at the back of these cards. And this is where, again, it gets interesting, right? So we have the pre-cons, the silver packs, and the art packs. All right, so the pre-cons are notably different from the silver pack and the art pack version. And the silver pack and the art pack version, again, are close. Uh, maybe not exactly alike, but they are close, right? So those are going to be hard to tell apart in the future uh, if you had some from the pre-con decks. You might be able to distinguish between packs from the pre-con decks but between the pack variants, the silver versus the art pack, it looks about the same, right? So they might have been printed at the same time or close together. Uh, we, don't, we don't really know that for a fact. Um, but now I wanted to go to something that is quite compelling that a little more definitively shows the difference between pre-cons and pack sample cards, right? All right, so we have the Raidness Titan. This is from um, a guy in the Discord, Haynes, so shout out to him. He uh, was very lucky to receive a um, a full pack of cards from a giveaway. I think, was it a full pack? Um, he was able to acquire some cards, you know, through various mechanisms, uh, through some giveaways, and then he's been purchasing some and acquiring a pretty incredible co collection. Um, so hopefully he doesn't mind me putting his name out there. He's, he's done this publicly in the Discord, so I don't think it's a big deal. But in any case, you have uh, the Titan, the Raidness Titan, and the Snow Leopard. So artwork by Tony Sudlo and Lindsay Krumet, just to acknowledge them. And uh, if you zoom in here, you can read what's what. On the left, you have the sample card pre-con. And then you have on the right, for comparison, a card from the sample packs. So pre-con pack, pre-con pack. And again, you see there's, there's probably some differences in the color hues. 
again, resolution isn't great, so I want to look at the backs of these cards. And now, let's look at the backs. So you got Precon on the left, Pax on the right. Um, so here you see, here's an example where it's a little trickier, a little more difficult to tell, right? And I think you could see in the color values of the Sorcery logo, um, left to right, Precon versus Pack, you can make out that difference. See, they look very consistent on the right side here versus the left side. Precons, Packs. It's just a, a deeper, almost like a navy blue versus more of a turquoise. Um, so that's probably your best bet to look for when you're trying to compare for provenance. But here is the definitive way we know that precons were different from the sample packs. And what I mean by that, they're fundamentally different in terms of the print file that was sent to the printer. And how do I know that? If you look at the mana source cost, right? Zero for the Snow Leopard. Again, on the left, this is the precon. And then by the time these sample cards, the packs were printed, you have the one mana cost. So this was a very early uh, design of this card. And then there's been a lot of development change. We know that that's what makes a sample card special and cool to us historians of the game that are into this kind of stuff. Um, and it changed from zero to one. So there you go. If you ever see a Snow Leopard with a zero, that's from a pre-con deck. And then all the sample packs you're going to find with the one mana cost. So when we see this in Kickstarter fulfillment, when, if and when you pull this card, and uh, folks that get several packs may be likely to get this since it's an ordinary, although the sample size is, again, going to be very small. Um, but you might get this card, and you're likely to see a 1 there, right, if this theory is true, and we have evidence that it is here. Um, I wouldn't expect that the print file would, would change across the prints of the, of the silver packs themselves. Um, so that was that was really a cool breakthrough that we discovered today and we're discovering and discussing in the Discord. Um, you know, there's some, like I say, there's some subjectivity or I guess um, uncertainty of the uh, color values, you know, just from regular print variation. So that wasn't really conclusive and definitive, but this shows us that this was indeed a difference in the print file. And one other thing that, that cast a shadow of doubt before this discovery is again i discussed this in a prior video but the first article here this was thought to be potentially a um error card error card right so this was um pulled and all actually in the precons and i believe in the packs and in both of those the there was a mix up here with the card atlas wanderers and then the card mechanic of rating this titan you know, if you look at this, it doesn't make sense. Genesis, this Titan deals seven damage on the site in front of it. That is the effect of the rate in this Titan, not the Atlas Wanderers. So that was pretty cool, but it was consistent in both. So we're like, okay, maybe the print file was the same for precons versus silver packs. However, we now have evidence, thanks to this image right here, that the print file was indeed different, but that difference either was not caught or maybe Eric just didn't care. You know, for test prints, it might not be material to go and fix that. So... <laughs> it's consistent on both and um uh just for that particular card the atlas wanderers but it is not indicative that it is the exact same print file there's definitively a difference there um so hope you guys find that interesting uh again this is uh, i think important um for the community to have this out there and historically documented for folks that are into sample cards and will be acquiring those in the in the future and want to have confidence that they are buying authentic, authentic samples. So there's a few pointers on how to tell the differences and uh, to expect some differences. All right, thank you guys uh, for following along. Appreciate it. If you could like the video and please share, uh, sharing, commenting, all those types of things really help. And please just spread the word and help us grow. Appreciate it. Uh, again, check the links in the in the in the um, description. Uh, join the Discord, Discord, be part of this conversation and community. Join the Facebook links. Um, there's a lot of great action going around across the community, and uh, it's a really fun, good time if you're into this kind of stuff. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Take care. Till next time.